Hi, I'm Miss Chris. Today we are having a Fan Nation edition of Crafting with Miss Chris, and I'm going to show you how to make a vest inspired by Stranger Things. The first thing you're going to do is decide if you want a jacket or a vest. If you want a jacket, use the links below to skip forward and start watching at how to make a back batch. If you want a vest, keep on watching. If you are making a vest, use the seam between the body of the jacket and the sleeve to create an even cut without having to measure anything. I start by cutting off on the outside of the seam and then try it on. If it's too wide in the shoulders, then I cut along the inside of the seam to make it smaller. It's your jacket, so adjust it to how you need it to be able to love it. You can go with really thin shoulders, keep it really broad, it's up to you. Uh, however, once you cut, you can't really reattach, so do it little by little. You also have the option to stitch about a quarter of an inch inside of the seam that you just cut open. That will keep your jacket from fraying too far, so you'll have like stylus fraying, but not like I it kept fraying until I no longer had a vest. Uh, kind of like when you make a pair of cutoff shorts and then you're like, it's the perfect length, and then like three washes later you're like, oh, it's getting way too short to wear in public. So keep that in mind as you're cutting as well. I'm now going to show you three different ways on how to make a back patch. The first two are out of an old t-shirt. Cut out a square with a design on it to the size you want your patch to be. I always cut things out a little bigger than I need to, since you can always make it smaller, but you can't make it bigger. This shirt would also make an excellent circular patch, since you just need to leave a little extra around the edge of the design when you're cutting it and then sew it on as a circle. The second way to make a back patch from your t-shirt is to have it fit into the back panel of the jacket. This is great for rectangular designs that you don't want to lose too much of the image for. Lay your shirt on top of the vest, centering the design on the back panel. Next, feel where the seams are. They'll be bulky enough, since it's a denim vest, to feel through your shirt. Using chalk, trace along the seams of your back panel of your vest. Due to shaping and garment construction, the back panel of your vest is actually a trapezoid, not a rectangle, so it's important to take your time and pay attention while you're tracing the seams. Once you've traced the shape of your back panel, cut along the lines that you just chalked. Again, like I said, you can always leave a little extra uh, and then trim it down as you need to. For the next step for making a back patch out of a t-shirt, skip ahead to sewing on patches and that will have a timestamp below as well. The third is to make a stencil. And it's super easy now. You don't have to trace it yourself and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife. You can actually just visit our Tom's River Makerspace and use our Cricut and they'll cut out the design for you. Seriously, look how fast this Cricut is cutting. It is so much faster and so much easier than doing it by hand. If you don't have a ruler or don't want to do math, you can just fold the jacket in half, matching the side seams. So that way you can find the middle that way and then just mark it off with a pencil in a couple places. That way you have essentially a dotted line to follow. You can then take your stencil, since it's on cardstock, and fold it in half to find the middle of that as well. Then you're going to line up the two seams that you found, and then decide where vertically you want your stencil to sit on your jacket. It's entirely up to you if you want it to sit along the bottom, the top, the middle. You use your judgment and decide what you think is best. Then you're going to choose whatever color paint you want your stencil to be. You can use multiple colors. My stencil has multiple parts that aren't attached, so I've used tape to just tape them in place. And now I'm just going to paint inside the stencil using the stencil to make sure my lines are crisp and blurred and just make sure the stencil stays in place. When sewing on patches, I use clear nylon thread or a polyester thread. That way it's strong, it's not going to just snap or tear on its own but you don't have to worry about matching the color and constantly having new bobbins of thread for every patch that you get. It's clear, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing is that because it is a polyester nylon, it's a little bit stiffer. So when I'm sewing it on, I tie the knot and then I start from the outside and have the ends tucked in under the patch so that way they don't like rub against my skin and like scratch. But then you just do a simple witch stitch, which is you go through the fabric and I always find it easier to go through, like up through the fabric and then down through the patch. That way you can see where you're going. Um, and also it's just a little bit easier to go through the stitching, not the um, iron-on material first. And then just move over like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch and just keep doing that all the way around, uh, making like little loops essentially. Uh, this is called a whip stitch. 
until you either get to the end of the thread or you get back to the beginning of the patch where you're then going to create a knot and just tie it off um, by making a loop, pulling your needle almost all the way through the loop, doubling back through the second loop that you created and then pulling it tight. I normally do this two or three times and then again to hide the ends from the outside of the jacket, I slide it through under the patch through to the back, pull it tight, and then trim it. That way, any of the ends that would stick out are tucked in nicely and you can't see it from either side. Another part of having a very cool battle vest is just having pins. And pins are readily available, you can get, buy them everywhere, you can kind of find everything you want, but you can also make your own pin. It is very much like the ending of, of how you make that pin. So you would need a soda tab, a bottle cap, and a safety pin. You're going to take your soda tab, you're going to put a little bit of a bend into it. That way that loop, that middle bar, kind of sticks out. And then you're just going to slide your safety pin through it. And then make sure that when you're putting it into the bottle cap, the pointy end of the safety pin is sticking out so that way you can attach it to things. You're gonna take a pair of pliers and then fold over the edges of the bottle cap, making sure that the soda tab is caught in there as well to keep it secure. If you're like, I just want everyone to know how much I like this brand of soda, you can leave the cap as it is and just use it as a pin right away. Or you can then paint over the bottle cap and then paint whatever you want onto it. I tried several times before accepting that I am not good at painting, but you can also print things out and stick it on there. Uh, so I printed out a tiny little crown for black pink and I'm just using Elmer's glue. I always say that Elmer's glue watered down is the same as Mod Podge essentially, or very similar where it's a good duplicate substitute. And I'm gonna prove that right now where I'm just using a layer of Elmer's glue, sticking down my little printout and then covering it with another layer of Elmer's glue to keep the edges from like pulling up as much. If you want like a glossier, shinier finish, Mod Podge is the better way to go. But if you're like, I've already got Elmer's glue, don't spend money that you don't need to. And you can do this with whatever design your heart decides to make. It's entirely up to you. You can make a ton of them. They're super cheap to make since it's clearly like if you're drinking sodas, um, you're gonna have all this stuff readily available. And it's like a fun way to repurpose things. Once you've made your pin, put them on the jacket wherever you want. Pyramid studs and spikes come mostly in one of two ways for how to attach them to your items. The first is going to be pyramid studs are pretty much always just like a thin piece of metal with like four little spikes coming off from the bottom. You're just going to take those spikes, push them like decide where you want on the fabric and then push them through. So that way you can see them on the other end flip the fabric over and so the spikes are facing up and use pliers. Honestly, I used to use like the eraser of a pencil and then just push them towards the center and then just keep lining up the spike, that little spike with the one before it, working your way down if you want them to be in a line and just keep folding everything in, rub your thumb over it, see if anything's sticking out. And if it's sharp, just bend it further in because you don't want to be poking and stabbing yourself all the time. Um, I've definitely scraped my hand open on things where I was like, ah, it'll be fine. It wasn't. And if you make a mistake with them, they're super easy to take back out. Just bend the spikes straight and pull it out so that way you can fix the placement. Normally though, the spikes are gonna be bent. It's gonna be really hard to line it up. So you kind of have to accept that like if you're pulling it out, that pyramid stud is done. And just start with a new one. It's gonna be a lot easier than trying to finagle it. Like it was already in the wrong spot once. Try to finagle one with bent spikes. It's gonna shift how it lines up. Just, they're not that expensive. And you get like a ton of them in one pack, so just use a new one. For spikes, uh, these are the other way. Some of them do come with like the same way as Pyramids does with just those little like four little spiky bits. These are a little bit more complicated to put in, but also better anchored to your items. So I'm putting them along the shoulders of my jacket. I'm gonna measure out where I want them, mark it with a marker. It doesn't matter because we're gonna use a um, punch to punch through it. So you're gonna use this Little metal thing has a little hole at the end, a little slide on, slot on the side so that all the fabric that you punch through comes out. It's like a hole puncher, but for fabric. Also, you have to use a hammer. So you're gonna place the hole punch where you want the hole to be. 
you're gonna take your hammer and you're gonna hit your way through it. Do not move while you're doing this. Like it's really important to keep it stable and to work on something that's sturdy. Once you've punched your hole through your fabric, you're gonna take the screw, pop it from the inside to the outside, place your spike, loosely tighten it into place, flip it over and then use a screwdriver to tighten it all the way. You're gonna repeat the step along the jacket. Trying to hole punch after you've already put the spikes in is a little bit harder because there's things in the way, uh, but then you can also like look at the placement and try and like adjust if you're like, things are not going right. But it's kind of a like, you've measured it out deliberately ahead of time. So that way you should be able to just punch five holes straight through and then attach five spikes or however many you're using. Since these are screwed in place as well, you can also, you can always unscrew them and change what you have place there. So my kit comes with a ton of different things. I can swap it out. I can have much smaller spice if I'm like, these taller ones are getting my way. I can keep them all like bigger. There's like curved ones, there's rounded ones. It's entirely up to you and they're changeable. So you can mix and match things. And that is it. It is never going to be truly finished. It is up to you how much you decorate your vest. But today you've learned how to turn a jacket into a vest in the first place. How to design your back patch. How to sew on your patches how to make your own buttons. Like I said, it's very much the little grape badge from up, how to add on pyramid studs and spikes. And now it is up to you to go make yours, absolutely your own, and do what you want with it. Support public libraries, like, share, and subscribe for more great videos.